No, go. come on, Gabe. Gabe. come on up. Gabe. Ellen, come on, Gab. I make everybody stand, make the candidates stand around me. They, they, and they do that, they hope my speech will be short enough. You see? <laughs> it doesn't really work out that way. Uh, merci beaucoup de votre présence. Thank you so much for, uh, for joining us tonight. Salam, shalom, peace be with you. Welcome to this, the official opening of our committee room in, uh, in Cotonej. We have a standing room crowd. That's always very heartening to, uh, to have a standing, uh, a standing room only crowd. Uh, je, je veux encore une fois vous remercier and, and thank the various leaders of communities who are here with us tonight. It's, uh, it's, it's really wonderful to see this level of support. I want to thank... Je veux reconnaître la présence également de Mme Madeleine Sultan, qui est du bureau de circonscription de Mme Hélène David, la députée d'Outremont. Merci, Madeleine, d'être présente avec nous. Oui. Um, where's Kokan Manizumaran? Kokan, city, uh, school commissioner, I know, I'm getting there. School commissioner for the Commission scolaire de Montréal. Kokan, thank you for being with us. Uh, we had Mary Josie Mastro Monaco at our uh, NDG launch, uh, and the and Joe Lala, the school commissioner. Uh, and so it, it's really lovely to see so many people here. I, I'm going to talk to you a little bit, and for those of you who are seated, you're very lucky, because <laughs> I'm going to talk to you a little bit about me. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about notre ville. Quelques mots sur Côte Neige NDG. Quelques mots sur les choix que vous avez qui, qui est devant nous le 5 novembre et l'avenir. Euh, moi, euh, je suis né ici à Montréal, quelques mots sur moi. J'ai jamais demeuré à l'extérieur de l'arrondissement Côte-de-Neige, notre nom Isn't that, that's very odd, at my age, I'm 57 years old. I've never lived outside this borough, ever. <laughs> ever. I was born in the Catherine Booth maternity, I'm not going to go, don't worry, it's not going to be year by year. <laughs> I'll skip over the I'll skip over the less interest, interesting parts. I, I assure you. I was born in the Catherine Booth Maternity Hospital in NDG, and uh, almost immediately my family moved to Goyer Street in Côte d'Ivoire, and we lived on Goyer for about 18 months, and we moved back into uh, to NDG, where uh, I've lived uh, ever since. And my wife was here when we got married. Uh, we chose to uh, stay in NDG and raise our family. Uh, our three children, who are now adults, uh, and I'm very proud of them. Ma fille, Emma, est née à côté, dans la maison de naissance, Côte de Neige. Uh, just a stone's throw from here. Uh, a, a wonderful experience. Um, you know, I, I am the product of a single mother. My mother uh, raised me, uh, essentially, on her own. Her, my mother was born in Barbados, by the way, so uh, the calendars, you know, the calendars are very proud of the fact of their Beijing heritage, and they're very, they're going to be very proud of Tiffany when she comes in to city council as someone with Beijing heritage, but you're number two. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm the first, <laughs> and the only one, to my knowledge, of Beijing Heritage member of, of uh, Montreal City Council. My mother's parents were from British Guiana, so I have Guyanese uh, uh, roots as well. And, I, and that just means I have to go and, and, uh, and to all the Guyanese events uh, and, and, and occasionally speak. And you know, I've never been to Guyana, I don't claim to be a Guyanese, but I have Guyanese heritage. Uh, you know, on my, my father's side, the Copemans have been here for some time. They're less interesting. It's a bit boring. <laughs> they came over from England. But, you know, uh, we all have a different experience. We all have a different experience about living in Montreal, living in Quebec, and living in Canada. My, part of my point is, we've all come from somewhere else. All of us. It's just a question of when. It's just a question of when. Nous étions, je pense, tous particulièrement fiers Quand le maire, euh, à l'initiative du maire, on a ajouté un symbole autochtone sur le drapeau et les armoiries de la ville de Montréal. Nous avons, nous avons reconnu que avant, parce que l'histoire de Montréal n'a pas commencé avec Jacques Cartier, l'histoire de Montréal 
a commencé bien avant avec les peuples autochtones. Et nous sommes, je pense tous, très, très fiers du fait qu'on a reconnu ce, ce, ces faits-là, that we added a, 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 a native symbol to our flag and to our crest, to pay homage to the First Nations communities who were here for many, many, many generations, many hundreds of years, before any of our ancestors set foot on this soil. And, and that just gives you an example of the, of the sensitivity of Mayor Coderre and, and uh, what he calls the living together, le vivre ensemble, because that's what we do in this community. We live together, and we live together in peace and respect and harmony. Uh, I went to French immersion. My mother spoke not a word of French, ladies and gentlemen, not a word. But she said to me, you know, Russell, to succeed here, to really thrive here, you're going to need to learn French. And so I was enrolled in French immersion, et je suis devenu pas pire, je pense. <laughs> Après quelques années de travail, on a travaillé fort, j'ai travaillé à Québec. Mais c'est l'importance, you know, my mother had this feeling that in order to really thrive in this province, it was necessary to do, for me, something that she had not been able to do, which is to learn French. I went to McGill, and again, my mother, uh, very modest circumstances. I remember her saying to me, Russell, you must go to university. I can't pay for it, but you must go. <laughs> so I worked. I worked summers. I did what it was needed to do. To, uh, tuition was a little lower then, but not much. We still have very, very low tuition. And I put myself through, through university. And it was uh, actually at Cégep, I met my lovely wife, and we put ourselves through university. And I'm you know, very pleased. Uh, we, we've been now married uh, 36 years. I say to people, I say to people, I've been married 36 years, I have to specify to the same woman. <laughs> you're, you're a saint! Because, because that's, that's the real achievement. And we've raised three wonderful children, one of whom is here tonight, is a, a great volunteer on, on Gabrielle's campaign, Alex Wave. <laughs> son Alex. Et j'étais le député libéral de Notre-Dame-de-Grâce pendant 14 ans. Euh, J'avoue très candidement, je pense que je suis moins connu dans Côte-de-Neige, et c'est normal. J'ai représenté les gens de Notre-Dame-de-Grâce pendant 14 ans à l'Assemblée nationale. Depuis 4 ans, on essaie de multiplier les présences, faire des percées. J'apprends sur Côte-de-Neige. Et j'ai encore du travail à faire. Mais je suis très à l'aise dans Côte-de-Neige et très, très, très fier que l'arrondissement et Côte-de-Neige et DG. What a wonderful place to live, ladies and gentlemen, in this, in this borough, the most populous borough in the city of Montreal. Yeah. When I, 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 I left politics, I, I thought I was leaving politics for good in 2008, and I went to Concordia University. J'ai travaillé comme un administrateur, as, a, as, a, uh, a, a, as an adjunct professor. In 2013, uh, Marcel Côté of Coalition Montreal came to see me and said, Russell, I'd like you to run for, for uh, political office with Coalition Montreal. And uh, so we, I discussed it with my family, my wife, my children. Uh, I think I missed politics more than I was willing to admit. And so in 2013, uh, uh, threw my hat in the ring. Hey, the way I approached this, ladies and gentlemen, the way I approached it in 2013 was, I made, it was like a job interview. I offered to serve. And if the population wanted to elect someone else, that's, I would accept that with great serenity and great, uh, and great um, uh, uh, I hope, uh, dignity, I hope, humility. Humility is the right word. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you, Marlene. <laughs> and I, I do this again. I say to people in 2017, I hope to continue, I want to continue, but I will accept the verdict of the people with great serenity and great hum humility, because that's what democracy is all about. Now, in 2013, in 2013, we were not on the same team. And boy, and, came around. and boy, am I glad we are now. Boy, am I glad we are now. And I'll talk about these individuals briefly, but I'm very, very pleased to, to, to be able to stand beside uh, Lionel Perez tonight. J'ai une citation pour vous qui vient de la presse. Katia Gagnon, une journaliste de rigueur, qui n'est pas toujours tendre envers notre administration. And this was in last Saturday's uh, La Presse. This is, I'm quoting a, a journalist, an independent journalist. En quatre ans, 
Denis Coderre a fait le ménage dans les finances de Montréal et redonné un élan à une métropole dont la réputation était en lambeaux. Jamais l'économie de Montréal ne s'est bien portée. This is the judgment of a journalist who is not always tender to our administration. And that was the opening paragraph of the portrait that she did of Denis Coderre. If you read nothing else, just go and read that one paragraph. It's enough. It gives you a summary in a few words of the progress that we've made in the last four years. We, as Lionel said, we have the lowest unemployment rate in 40 years. C'est du jamais vu. It's unbelievable. We have sustained and high economic growth. We're outstripping growth in, in all of the regions of the province. We've had our best tourism year since Expo. Alors, le conseiller de Loyola dit que le 375e was a private party. If it was a private party, an awful lot of people heard about it, and, and tens of thousands came to Montreal to participate in the party. Hundreds of thousands came to Montreal to participate in this party. We've had a banner year for tourism. And you know what? People leave here, they're happy. They're going to come back again. It's part of the resurgence of the city of Montreal. And it's a wonderful thing to see. We as an administration held expenses, growth in expenses to under 2%. C'est pas facile ça. La tendance des gouvernements c'est de dépenser plus que ça. 2% d'augmentation dans les dépenses. Because it's not Lionel's money, it's not my money, it's not Denis Coderre's money, it's your money. Mm -hmm. And so, We have to be prudent on how we spend it. And we were prudent. We spent when it was necessary to spend improving infrastructure on services, but we kept an increase to under 2%. We have complete labor peace. We signed collective agreements with the policemen's brotherhood, with the firemen, with our white collar workers, with our blue collar workers, without a strike. That's unbelievable. Ça fait longtemps qu'on n'a pas cette paix syndicale ici à Montréal. Long, longtemps. Et là, on, on l'a obtenu. Et là, on l'a obtenu de façon rigoureuse et respectueuse des contribuables de la ville de Montréal. We did the necessary infrastructure spending. I'm not embarrassed by the spending we've done. It was the right thing to do. As Lionel mentioned, and As the executive committee member responsible for infrastructure and voirie and transport, he knows a thing or two about the way we've spent our money. We've spent it responsibility, making improvements that are necessary to Montrealers. The streets, the sidewalks, traffic lights, parks, park buildings. These are responsible and long-lasting improvements to our city. These are not flash in the pan. I was at the funeral of uh, Greta Chambers, a friend of mine and a well-respected Montrealer about two weeks ago. And at that funeral, I was seated immediately in front of, actually, probably the only time in my life I've been seated in front of the principal of McGill University. I was representing the mayor. And the principal of McGill University turned to me spontaneously and, he, and she said, Suzanne Fortier, she said, you know, Russell, I have never been more hopeful for the future of the city of Montreal as I am today. Are the we? principal of McGill University. We have to transmit that hope and that confidence to our citizens. That's part of our responsibility as well. Lionel stole my line. <laughs> maybe he borrowed it. Stole is maybe too strong a word. Maybe he just stole it. Are we better off than we were four years ago? Of course we are. We're better off in the city. We're better off in this borough. I have no doubt about that, ladies and gentlemen. And that's one of the ways you judge a team, is by its past and its record. And although it was lonely on, on borough council occasionally, because I only had Lionel, <laughs> I had another member of my party 
who most often voted, more often voted against me than with me. <laughs> Lionel and I voted together on almost everything and we were in different parties. So occasionally it was a bit lonely. We're going to put an end to that, by the way. Lionel and I are going to be a lot less lonely come the 6th of November. Because yeah. we're going to have qualified, devoted people joining us on our borough council. Here, here. On a présenté des budgets équilibrés dans l'arrondissement, des surplus année après année. On a investi ce surplus de façon responsable. Une saine gestion de vos, de vos, uh, de vos argent. Housing. I want to talk quickly about housing. We did a number of significant, uh, undertook a number of significant initiatives in housing, many of which in terms of uh, housing conditions were begun under Lionel Perez when he was the interim borough mayor. We extended that. We have more inspectors. We're, we're, try, we're trying to crack down on, on uh, slum landlords. We put together a fund of a quarter million dollars where we, when it's necessary, the borough will authorize that work be done if the safety and security of tenants is in danger. We will pay for the work if it's an emergency, we will bill the landlord. If the landlord won't pay, we'll put a lien on their building. They will not be able to sell it, and they will not be able to refinance the mortgage. This is the way to improve the housing stock in this community, ladies and gentlemen. And it's the first. No other borough in the city of Montreal put a fund like that together. And if we need more money, we'll put more money into it. But I'm told by our people, even the threat of the city coming in and saying, we're going to do the work because you're threatening the safety and security of tenants, the landlords turn around and do it. So it's already having a positive effect. And I'm very, very proud of that because improving the housing stock in, 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 in our borough is important and particularly in Cote d'Ange. And we will go on doing that with great success, I am convinced. Ilya, I, I launched a anti -poverty, uh, an anti-poverty initiative, which I'm very, very proud of. It's actually chaired, the group is chaired by uh, a fellow by the name of Jim Hughes, a former NDP candidate, a former deputy minister of social development in New Brunswick. Parce que la lutte contre la pauvreté est également un élément très important dans notre communauté. And I think that this uh, forum will lead to very, very good things in our borough. Il y a des choix, messieurs, dames, à venir. Là. Il y a des choix individuels. Je vous dis que Tiffany Callender est la personne toute désignée pour devenir conseillère dans Côte des Neiges. Je suis convaincu de par son expérience, de par ses capacités, de par son intelligence, son dévouement à la communauté. She is the one we need in Côte d'Ange. Yeah. Yeah. Buddy Cabugao in Snowden. Buddy is a well-respected and eminent member of the Philippine community in this city. And you know, I heard a slogan the other day. Elect the first Filipino to Montreal City Council. I'm in complete agreement with that. Buddy Cabugao. Yeah. Buddy has a life experience, a professional experience, a former honorary consul general for the Republic of the Philippines here in Montreal. And he can contribute a great deal. He brings a certain sensitivity to certain issues, not only issues relating to seniors, but more broadly. By the way, Tiffany, the Black Community Association of Cote d'Ange works extensively with seniors and works with the Filipino community as well. That's the kind of outreach that Tiffany brought as, as, as executive director of the Black Community Association of Cote d'Ange. We need Buddy on City Council. We need Buddy on City Council to reinvigorate Snowden and to be a very, very dignified representative of the Filipino community. All right. We need Lionel Perez. 
And Lionel's wife and family are here. I'm already bored. Oh, his daughters are still here. I was worried the daughters, it's been enough already. They went up. They're, still, they're very disciplined young ladies. Uh, I know you have a son who's coming in, I think. Lionel, Maitre Lionel Perez, uh, Lawyer Perez, I have come to know a great deal better in the past four years. We've become friends. I admire Lionel for his intellect, for his rigor, and his probity. Trois qualités dont on a besoin sur le Conseil Municipal de Montréal. Rigueur, intellect, probité. Those three words summarize and devotion to community and family. I'll add those. Now I've got five. Five reasons to vote for Lionel Perez. <laughs> five, but five really good reasons. Rigor, intellect, probity, devotion to family, and devotion to community. You can't do better than that. And I've seen Lionel as a colleague in the executive committee handling the infrastructure file, and I'm not sure very other members of the city council could do what Lionel did. He's done a tremendous job. He deserves to be re-elected in Darlington. He will be re-elected in Darlington and will play an important role. Our campaign organizer wants me to wrap up. Yeah. <laughs> so does Felicia Perez. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Felicia? Yeah, you did. You said yeah. I heard someone say yeah over there. Okay, it wasn't Felicia. Maybe it was my wife. <laughs> Usually my wife stands up and says, okay, it's enough. <laughs> Finished. When the phone's not going off. <laughs> my phone. Okay, dear. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, I've done the best I could for the past four years. <coughs> Have we made mistakes? Of course we've made mistakes. I've made mistakes. That's normal. But I've learned a lot in four years, and I want to continue to offer my services to the population of Cote d'Ange and Dichy. My administration can't be too bad. You had two Projet Montréal councillors. Peter McQueen with eight years of experience. Magda Popiano with four years of experience. Both those individuals had an opportunity to run against me for borough mayor. If they thought I was doing a really terrible job, as they occasionally say I do, why didn't they run against me? Why? I don't know. I don't know. You gotta ask them. But it would be logical for the people with political experience to run against me. They chose not to. Roger Montréal has put up a candidate who's never held elected office, has no experience in government and no experience in administration. Le l'arrondissement de Côte-Neige Notre-Dame de Grâce est le plus populaire de la ville de Montréal. Presque 170 000 de population, complexe, diverse. Ça prend quelqu'un avec un peu d'expérience politique pour gérer tout ça et un peu d'expérience de législation. I had my first debate with the uh, candidate from uh, Coalition Montreal this afternoon. I'll let you judge. It's not out yet, it's on global. My own humble opinion is that Mr. Gavidian is also not ready to be borough mayor. He's not ready. He has ran a couple of times previously. He ran for Vision Montreal in 2009. He ran for the Progressive Conservative Party, the Conservative Party of Canada under Stephen Harper, the Conservative Party of Canada under Stephen Harper in 2011. Now he's running with the Progressive Marvin Rotran. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Harper and Marvin Rotran. The man has run for the same group, same parties. Je ne comprends pas. More interestingly, Mr. Kavidian in March and April was corresponding with Lionel Perez. We have the correspondence because he was inquiring about running for us in March or April of this year. Where? In Snowden. Here we go. He voulait se présenter pour l'équipe de Nicader dans Snowden contre Marvin Rotran. Et là, il est le candidat à la mairie de M. Rotran. 
Messieurs, dames, même moi, parfois en politique, je comprends pas grand chose. Celle-là, je la comprends pas. Je la comprends vraiment pas. Ça n'a aucun logique, tout ça. He may be a very nice man, I'm sure he is, but permit me to doubt his commitment to Coalition Montreal when he was talking to Lionel Perez about joining our party and running for us in March and April of this year. Ladies and gentlemen, I will close with this. This is, I use this term when we announced five of us in the summer. And now we have our sixth member. I use the term dream team. L'équipe de rêve. Colleagues, stand aside for a moment. I want you to look at this. What's the first thing that comes to mind when you see this poster? Diversity. Anybody? Diversity. No, we're all the same height. <laughs> we're all the same height on the on the on the on the on the poster. Look at this. Come here. No, 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 no. Buddy Cabugao is six foot three on the poster. Look at that. Buddy, you were up on stilts. What happened? I don't know. I told them that that was going to happen. I said, you know, when the poster comes out, we're all going to be the same height. Mais plus sérieusement, cette équipe représente Côte de Neige, Notre-Dame de Grâce. Représente la diversité. Les gens qui sont devant vous, incluant Hélène et Gabriel, représente une variété d'expériences, de talents, de vécu, de visions nécessaires pour notre arrondissement et nécessaires pour le conseil municipal. I need Tiffany Callender and Buddy Cabugao to join us along with Elaine Etier and Gabrielle Retta on Borough Council and the mayor needs them as I think he needs us <laughs> <laughs> on City Council. Hey. We need you. Yes. Because all right. Parce que aucun de nous va gagner sans vous. No one here will win without you. So we need you. We need you to spread the good word. We need you to volunteer. We need you to donate a little bit of money. <laughs> Whatever you can spare. Running an election campaign costs money. But mostly we need you to vote on the 5th of November. If the people in this room speak to 10 people who will speak to 10 people, all of us will be on city council. Ladies and gentlemen, nous avons besoin de vous, j'ai besoin de mes collègues. Merci d'être venu ce soir. You can tell this is a sort of a mixed Filipino Jewish event because there's food. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere I go in the Filipino community, they try and feed me. Everywhere I go in the Jewish community, they try and feed me. And I'm still managing to lose weight because I'm on a stress diet, it would appear. But a stress diet works really well for me. Mais restez avec nous. Parlez avec nous. Aidez-nous. Aidez-moi à faire élire Tiffany Lionel, Buddy, Hélène et Gabriel le 5 novembre. Let's go eat! <laughs> <laughs>